The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unu Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. everyone and welcome to Embrace Your Power. Uh, tonight I have a special guest. Her name is Misty Tripoli and um, she is um, an amazing woman. You know, she's always loved movement and dance and she had, um, you know, this um, amazing experience where, you know, she went through so much. She became severely bulimic and she was overworked and she just ended up cracking and at that time, when that happened to her, you know, she decided to do something different with her life. She created this movement called the World Groove Movement. And, you know, she um, empowers people and, you know, she teaches people to love the skin they're in, to just get up and dance and do what you love. And, you know, there's so many people who have um, issues with body image. And she spends a lot of time, you know... Um, reaching out to people and showing them a different way of, of viewing your body and to come together and just to be authentic and creative and to have much, have as much fun as possible. And, you know, there's so many people who have these self image, self image problems with their body. You know, it's, it's, uh, unfortunately it impacts not only women, but men, you know, who have um, negative or distorted body images. And uh, a lot of times, too, that, you know, stops you and hinders you from loving yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, then, you know, that's that's a big problem. And I have her actually calling in right now. Hello? Making my call now. Hi, Janet. Hi, Misty. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to have you on today. And I was just telling... Uh, the listeners a little bit about your background so for people who don't know anything about you you know please share with them you know um what you do and how you started this movie so amazing well yeah well introduce me already my name is Nancy. i um am the founder of the world of movement which is um movement of these really fun awesome dance sports all around the world. We're in over 20 countries, and it's basically we get people together. It's a group dance experience, but allows people to connect, to unite, but yet be completely creative and authentic to themselves. And this all kind of came about because I, uh, through my own personal journey, this group method that I developed was what healed my life, and now what I share with the world. But I was living in Los Angeles. I was severely bulimic. I was, um, you know, living that kind of life everyone was trying to live to be perfect and pretty and, and please everyone and do all the right things and have the right car and live in the right apartment and, you know, try to be pretty all the time. And um, it was killing me, literally. And then when I started to let all that go and began to meditate, I started to let myself just dance the way I wanted to dance and what felt good to my body. And it developed very quickly into this method. And once that happened, I got signed with Nike. I started traveling the world as a Nike athlete. And it just Loaded. And now the world is movement all around the world, and I've got the trainers that provide this experience for people to come together and, and feel what that feels like, to move their body in a way that feels really, really good and not try to be like anyone else. It's been an awesome journey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so amazing. You know, I, I love that, that you say that, you know, to, you know, ev everyone needs to, um, be authentic and love the skin you're in. I, you know, I, I love that, you know, because I, I'm sure like going through, you know, I, I know that you said you live in Los Angeles and it's, it is tough. You know, people compare themselves to other people and they try to be like other people. Yeah. Well, you can't get around it. Unfortunately, it's like even though after 10 years of education and and, you know, I have daily practices, I do television, I don't do magazines, I don't do anything that puts these images of that I'm not enough or I'm not good enough or that I don't have enough. I just, I really protect my space. But when I travel, like I live in Mexico, I just, but like I just was in Los Angeles. And after being in the ladies and for a day or two days with my practices and being a warrior for truth, 
I still start to feel bad about myself because I feel like, oh my God, it's, I don't have enough. I'm not enough. My body's not perfect. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I haven't accomplished enough. And, and it's all just a big lie. Like, it's just, but it's hard to free yourself from it because it's everywhere you look. It's on the internet, it's on Facebook, it's on everywhere you look. Everything is to show you that you're not enough because if you're not enough, then they have something to sell you. Now you're broken and now we've got to fix you. So that's how they sell you products is they feel like you're broken and you're not enough and you don't so, um, it, 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 You have to be a warrior, literally a warrior for your life uh, to actually ask that not enoughness and that you move is perfect the way that you want to do things the right way and the way, the way you look is the way you're supposed to look. And perfect body people, it's not real. It's not real. No, <laughs> It'll it, kill you if, you if you try to pursue it. And you know that's so true, and um, I see that all the time too. People, um, you know, we are all created unique. There, we all have individual fingerprints that are no one is alike, and we all have gifts. Everyone has different gifts and talents, and you know, it, it is sad that you know the media uh, throws so much at everyone. You see it on billboards, you see it in magazines, on TV, ra I mean, radio, people are constantly trying to be like somebody else. They don't, they think that if only I had that body, if only I had, you know, that girl's hair or that guy's suit, whatever it is, and then I'll be happy. But, you know, you have to be happy with who you are. Yeah, but unfortunately, this is when I you know, when I looked at my own life, I didn't know one woman that actually liked her, actually was okay with her body, was okay with who she was. Everyone was on a diet or complaining about, I'm not, but the insecurity levels were so high. Right, this is a, wait a minute, like, and when I really started to, my awareness, it was like, I was not born to hate myself. I wasn't born to obsess about my body, I wasn't born. But we're taught these things, we're not actually taught basic human skills on how we actually deal with the outside world. Process it. It's supposed to be like like my method, this group method that the this dance experience is based off of is based off five simple functions. It's the foundation of the dance person. No one cares what you look like. Actually really don't. Looking at you, they you know, like they really are they do care. It's their problem. It's their, you know, they're wasting their own time. But no one's actually really about you or worried about you. Here's what you look like. You know, and we just our lives and put for everyone. That's the first one. Is that we dance where we say, hey, look at Dance? We truly dance like no one cares because no one actually does dance. Oh. I love that. I love that. Yes. And, and so true, you know, you, I love there's a, there's a, um, something that I read not too long ago that says dance like no one's looking, you know, just, and I love that. And, and I love that that's part of your, your method. So, so tell us, tell us some more. I understand the simple truth. And that was the one simple truth that hit me 10 years ago. It hit me so hard because I realized I was to fit in. And when I realized I don't care anymore, I'm just going to do it my way and I don't care what anyone does. I need to, I need to, instead of expecting someone's approval to make me happy. And, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Are you still there? I'm okay, here. Good. Okay, so the second truth is that you are unique. You are a unique individual. There's seven point whatever billion different people on the All unique. We've all got similarities. We all have these human characteristics, but we're all unique and absolutely different. Understand that, that don't copy anyone. Copying is copying. Be an originator, not a duplicator. That's what we teach on the dance floor. Originate. Move the way your body wants to move. And the third truth is that when you do something your own way, like when you move your body your own authentic way, it is actually the right way. It's perfect. So don't copy, don't follow while your body or your life or whatever it is you want to do, it's going to 
progression your way and trust that your way is the right way. And the fourth one is no one can do it for you. No one's going to dance for you. No one's going to be happy for you. No one's going to live your dreams for you. No one's going to no one's going to do anything for you. Ultimately, that we have to ultimately all stand on our warrior and champion for our own life. And the fifth truth, the final truth, is that those four other things are good ideas when you put them into practice. You don't understand anything when you actually apply it. So the group dance floor is a place where you get to apply and practice those things real time in the moment. It's mind blowing what it does to people when they wake up literally just in the middle of just doing a little wiggle with their butt. They're like, oh my God, this is the first time I've allowed myself to be authentic and creative and myself fearlessly without, you know, worrying about what someone thinks about it or its judgment. And I've been judging myself like, well, this is the way I'm supposed to do it. And it's cool and it's okay and it's different. So that's my been my mission in the last ten years. Trying, you know, working to get people together and give them permission, literally liberate their minds from their own prison of worrying about. Oh my God, I have to look right, and I have to be pretty, and I have to stand. And which for me, it's, you have no power. You are not in your power. So I'd love to help people get power. You know, that that is so amazing. And, you know, I just thought of something while you were saying that. You know, I I love to watch little kids because they don't care if anyone's watching them. They don't, you know they'll if you go to a party and there's music and they start dancing, they do their own thing. You know, and then and sad that we as we grew older, we started caring what other people thought of us. We started looking around, saying, "Oh my gosh, you know, I, I shouldn't move this way. I shouldn't do that." But you know, it. Uh, so great that you know the people that you know you that are involved in your movement that they can do that. It's like going back to being yourself, you know. And that's, and that's the greatest gift you can give anyone. Like what you just said is so true. You watch babies; they dance before they walk. Like we literally are born to dance. Put music on the children. Stop them from dancing. Don't have to teach them; they'll just do it. That's how we actually naturally are. But unfortunately, like you said, we get older and we get self-conscious, and someone tries to teach you how to dance, and you're more dead if you said, "Well, I can't dance," or you don't feel like you're rhythmic, or you compare yourself to those that are supposedly good dancers. But we're all good dancers. So do it your own authentic way. It is our most natural form of movement. When you reconnect to it, it's different than, than any other thing. It's different than, you know, painting or any other form of art. Because our physical needs to see the bodies that we're, we are we live in, if you look at them, we are literally born for creating our limbs, the way that we are Fortunately, that fear of embarrassment or that fear of getting it wrong, which is literally equal to the fear of death. Most people, you know, the fear of embarrassment is equal to the fear of death. Will restrict them the day they die. They literally will never love their body and experience what it feels like to come alive at a level beyond what they can ever imagine. And it's just, it's as simple as putting some music on, letting yourself dance just to feel good. Let your body feel good. You're there to do it by, you know, too. Start by yourself. Put music on and just in the comfort of your own home and give yourself permission. A wild and crazy, like set yourself free. You have to flex that muscle. It will actually start to transform areas of your life, into your relationships, into your work, into everything else. But you've got to start somewhere. Yeah, that's so true. That's a great point. You know, it's funny you say that because I, what I do when I wake up in the morning is I, the first thing I do is I put on music and I dance. That's how I start my day. <laughs> and, you know, there's time. Yeah. And there's times when, you know, uh, something's happened and I haven't been able to do that. 
oh my goodness, you know, I feel like I'm missing something when, you know, I'm not starting my day like that. And, you know, I want for what I do also for exercises, I dance. I'll put on music for like an hour after I come home from work and I'll just dance, you know, and I always tell people, you can't dan be dancing and feel depressed or unhappy. You automatically it automatically lifts your mood. You automatically go into this happy place and you just feel good. Yeah. You know, it, it's incredible. It's, yeah, it's true medicine for the soul. Because you forget your name, you forget your problems, you forget, you forget, like you, you literally, like you said, you just go into this state of joy and you're not really thinking. And if you do think, which I think is amazing, you probably experience it too. And why when you don't dance, you Because when you dance, Absolutely, you know, and I, I've, I've actually, you know, since I'm a life coach, I've actually um, <laughs> recommended this to people who are, you know, are going through um, tough times or, you know, they're, they're having stress in their life. If you just put on music and you start dancing, like you said, you know, um, solutions come, you know, you get, you open up your creativity, you go into this different place and it really does help you. And people think, you know, God, that sounds so weird, but you know, it's the sim those little simple things that, you know, will cause uh, something like that to, you know, shift you to a different mood. You, you change your energy. When you do that, you completely yeah. go into a different energy. And when you change your energy, energy from negative to positive, then that's when things happen. Things change. Totally. And that's, this is what's so cool for all your listeners. Not require any skill whatsoever. You don't have to know anything. You can have four lessons. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how your body wants. It, the key is, is just to allow it to move the way it wants to. Like put your favorite music on and just let, just see what happens. Like let your body and let it be weird. Let it be crazy. Let it not make sense. It's completely stupid. Who cares? You're right. You know, and when you do that, it will blow your own mind. You know, no, you know, that's great advice because, you know, I, I, I you know, the, the funny thing has happened to me when I, I've been, da I love dancing since I was a little girl. And, um, one time, you know, I met this girl who was a, uh, you know, she, she was studying ballet and she said, you know, um, she didn't want to do ballet because, you know, she, like again, she was afraid to be compared to the other girls who were good. And she, she had a teacher that said to her, you know what, really, um, take notice of your body, how it moves. You know, everyone has different movements. You, you're, you're, you know, you create, you create your own awareness of, you know, your own body and, and, you know, that you can move it whichever way you want. Our bodies are amazing. They can move and they can, you know, bend and twist in so many different ways that, you know, we, it blows us away. We could be blown away. You know, you look at gymnasts, you look at other people who, um, you know, do these different types of, Sports, our bodies are amazing. They are amazing. Uh, yeah. Don't compare how you move. Looks like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we're, we're not perfect. Right. No. You're cutting. Yeah. You're, you're cutting out a little bit. <laughs> Are you there? Hello, Misty. I think we got we got a bad signal. I I can't hear you anymore. Um. Anyway, as you know, she's right. You know, we can't compare ourselves to anyone. Uh, everyone's body is unique. We're all, all different. And uh, I think we just lost her. Um, she'll call back. But, you know, she makes a great point that, you know, um, we can't compare ourselves. We're all unique. And, you know, if you have a negative body image, it, all it does is it hinders you. So, you know, you know, you have to choose to be um, free. And, and don't worry about what anyone thinks of you. And if you, you know, if you out and do something and someone is judging you and that's their problem. It's not like she said, it's not about you. So, you know, it's really important that you choose. Hold on a second. Here she is. Hello. Hi, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, you know, I was just re reiterating what you said about, you know, um, you know, don't compare yourself to anyone. You're, everyone is unique. And, and, you know, what you said is so, is so valid. And, you know, I'm going to ask you because, you know, you went through, um, the, um, body image issues. You had, um, bulimia. Now, I, you know, I know that when people have, um, you know, these type of eating disorders, it really does impact your body image. So it's, it's very, it's, it's like some, one of the hardest things I think people go through. Well, what's interesting is it's not just bulimia. Bulimia is one expression of what I realized because I was in Los Angeles classes a the week. Everything from Pilates and yoga and spinning and boxing and aqua. And I was teaching everything. And at the same time, like I said, I was bulimic growing up three and four days a day, literally to the point that I almost killed myself. And that was my expression of this dysfunction of that I'm not okay with my body. My body is not. What I realized in the industry that I'm in and when I would teach all my classes, when I looked out to my classes, all the women in my class were dealing with the same thing. But it was all expressing itself in a way. People have exercise. If you obsess about calories, if you obsess about you know, any of this stuff, it's not normal. That's not right. We're not supposed to obsess about our bodies. We're not supposed to obsess about, you know, every little calorie that goes into our body or the fat or the sugar or the... But that's not a quality of life. That's an obsession. And, you know, anorexia, and there's lots of different expressions of it. But ultimately, it's right. And it's not the way... And I know for sure what hit me was that I know I was not born obsessed about calories and obsessed about my weight and my body. I wasn't. I know I wasn't. Powerful, powerful human being. Do a lot more than worry about the size of my ass. And <laughs> what, a, what a waste of time. But this, this goes on to a little bit deep subject is that in the system, women are so powerful. But if you keep them all minded, worrying about stupid stuff that doesn't matter, like the size of and you weaken them, they will then stand in their power, and then they can be sold, manipulated. Where we as women, once you realize this, you're like, oh, where am I spending about? What am I worried about? But what we don't realize in unconsciously is that we think that beautiful is love. Because if we're beautiful, that means we are worthy of love. If we're not beautiful, we are not worthy of love. It's very deeply, deeply rooted into our unconscious. But that's really what drives most of us because it all equates to love because we will die without love. So if we feel like we're pretty, we're going to get lots of love. We're worthy of it if we deserve it. But if we're not pretty, we don't feel like we deserve love. So it goes into such a deep, rooted, psychological, and it creates these behaviors of women that, I mean, you can just look out. We're obsessed about our looks. We are obsessed about our bodies. And it's an absolute waste of time. And um, you just every person has to come to that awakening on their own. But you have to see it. Like I realized I was just wasting life away. And I realized when I woke up in that one first truth, no one actually cared. And the people that do care about me don't care about that. They don't care what I look like. The people that actually love me don't care what I look like. So who am I trying to impress? Who's the 
am I trying to actually get? You know, because I don't, I, and then when I realize I don't need the attention of people that, that don't care about me. People that care about me, love me, whether I'm, uh, you know, 200 pounds or 150 pounds. They're going to love me no matter what. They want me to be happy and healthy and vibrant. So they're not worried that, you know, that, you know, I've got pretty faith. So this is what we as, as individuals, it's mostly, I'm a woman, so I, I deal with it from a woman's perspective, but I know men now deal with it because men, you know, are now used to the billboards of all the hot men right now. Now they have to be hot and sexy too because they're not worthy of all the hot women if they're not. So they're dealing with the same thing. The small-minded. It's away from our power. And um, that's why this message helps to connect you back to the truth so that you can actually experience it physically and viscerally. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. I, I love that you say that because you know it's true. You know, it's like you everywhere you see, um, you know, it it's we're obsessed with looks, we're obsessed with beauty, and you know, it's so true what you said about you know, people think if I'm beautiful, then I'll get loved. And you know, one of the things that I noticed um, is that a lot, you know, a lot of times that you know, even as as a little kid, people will say. Oh, you know, you're so pretty or you're so beautiful and they don't acknowledge the little girls being intelligent or, you know, acknowledge any other of their, um, like you said, their power. So I think that that's, it starts when they're little. It starts when you're little and, and that's, you know, unfortunate. It really is. Well, totally because we live in a society that places all the value on your value in this you know, you know, of Hollywood and all that stuff. It is physical. It is purely what you look like. They show you that everywhere you look, everywhere you see, like, it's all about how pretty you are and how like, whoa, what, what, we are off course here. Like, that's what you say, just stop it, turn it all off and just dance. Turn that to your heart. The truth is, it doesn't, none of those things matter and you know, I'm 26 now, and so I'm getting older, and it's interesting because, you know, I can say this, but I also, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a fairly attractive person, so it's like, oh, you can say that, but now that I'm getting older, that beauty that I had when I was younger is fading. It's like, oh, I even put some value on that, and now it's like I have to, I have to reconnect constantly with, it's not my value. Not my value. My body is not capacity to create and to inspire and so many other things that have such a value than this body that's temporary that is a, that has an expiration date. This is what everyone needs to remember. Are all programmed to expire. We don't know when that's gonna happen, how to have this beautiful meat suit, whatever it looks like, whatever you thought, whatever you were born with, you didn't it, it was given to you by your parents, you didn't, you know, choose what your color of your hair was gonna be your you know, the, you know, the size of your nose, that is genetic. You were born into this meat suit, and it's miraculous in what it can do, what it is capable of. temporary. And I also believe that this meat suit is centralized. It is built for pleasure. It's built for fun. It's built for play. It's built to enjoy. And unfortunately, when you get into this obsession with body and look, all of this, you're not in your joy. You're not in your happy. You're not in the fun of what your body actually has. And I know for me that I'm not worrying about the body and actually wondering how much fun can I have. In a healthy way, like fun in this meat, really enjoy it. I've never been in better shape my whole life. I don't I don't even try. But it, it, I don't have to try. This is the key of anyone out there. You work inward, outward. Work really hard physically and go to the gym and do sit-ups and push-ups and try to make your body super sexy and hot. And you're going to work your ass often and it's not. But if you absolutely start, start practices like meditation, start to value yourself, start to dance and you start to do things that make you light up and make you excited and happy. Vibration goes up. You don't want to abuse yourself. Outside stress will naturally be, but most people don't get that. They are just at the 
you know, you see all these photos and you're like, I just have to have a perfect body and you go and you pummel yourself and hurt yourself in, in the quest of, you know, and you even see it all over the place, all over Facebook, everywhere. It's like, no gain, no gain, and those that don't work hard don't get anything, and this brain that they program us to think that we work hard and we have to push and we have to have I I would think for that. Mm-hmm. Don't buy into that whole not true. It's not true. Be- like, we're trying to we love ourselves. I, I mean, I, it's taken me years to love myself. But what I did is I started by, I would ask myself every day when I woke up, how would it be nice to myself? What would I do? How would this be nice? What would that look like? I know how to be nice. I know what that looks like. If I love myself, I'm to swallow. Those of you that are out there, look, ask yourself every day, and I deserve, I deserve my own, I deserve my own compassion. Because most of us are so mean to ourselves, matter what we say, the words and the, the, the thoughts, and we are our worst critic and our worst, we just beat ourselves up daily. And if you could just stop that voice and just quiet it a bit and just, well, wait a minute, it's not even true. What was something I could just say something nice for like if you mess up on something, for example, say you did something on your that you and start beating yourself, oh crap, I did that again. And so like why do I say those things? Instead of that, just flip the script and retrain your brain and say your neural pathway. I'm not really happy that I Wow, oh, I'm so glad that I learned. You know what, next time I'm learn to talk to yourself in a positive way. Pat yourself on the back and lift yourself up and go forward. And that is huge. Change your mental pattern. Wow. And learn to be. Wow. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, you know, and, and that's what I tell people too, because we can be our own worst enemy, you know, um, we, we beat ourselves up in, in our head and, and then we, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we create this, uh, whole story about ourselves in our head that isn't even true. Um, you know, beating ourselves up and telling us we're, you know, I, I know for myself when I was younger, I would say to myself, oh my God, you know, why did you do that? That was stupid. You know, and I would, all this mental chatter, like you said, it just, it, it, it doesn't do anyone any good. And all it does is it brings you down and you're not loving yourself. And I think that's like, exactly. like you said, it's so key, this self, this chatter in your head. Now, how did you how did you get um, a hold of that? Because, like for myself, I started noticing it, and as soon as I caught myself saying it, I would say, "Nope, that's my sabotager. I'm not going there. I'm not allowing it." You know, and, and I started catching it, and I say, "Nope, nope, nope." And I, you know, I like you said, I was started being kind to myself, and and um, you know, turning things around. So, you know, what did, what did you do to that? You know, I started to meditate. My own, not my thoughts, thoughts happen. So I started to ask myself, well, the goodness thing that thoughts are happening, watching the thoughts, and then I realized, oh, that's who I am. River, I'm not my thoughts. I can just wait. Real, they're not even true. My ego is my sabotage. is always trying to put me out, keep me. Oh, and so I, it's the first step is just the awareness of that voice and how that conversation is happening in your head. And to just witness it and be present with it. And don't judge it. Just be like, oh, wow, look at my thoughts just go. Look at me go. Ask myself. Like, are you serious? Like, what are you saying that to yourself again? <laughs> and then I would sit and I... And I like the work, I don't know if you've ever heard of Byron Katie, but I love the work of Byron Katie. It's called The Work, where you actually question your thoughts. Actually sit with your thoughts. Anything that causes you stress, ask yourself. Like, wow, like, is that actually true? Is that absolutely true? And then the next question that I love, she asks, and she's like, how will you think that thought? Because you're ever not dealing with what's happening in your life. You're only dealing with thinking about it. All you ever are dealing with is thoughts. Thoughts create the emotion. 
So if you understand that and you're looking at your thoughts, you're like, so if I think the world, the world sucks and the world and, and life is hard. Look, life is hard. And what that I've been given from life hard and you have to work hard to get money. So let's just take that thought. And that stresses me out thinking that I have to work hard to get something. So is that true? And can I absolutely know that that's true, that I have to work hard to get something? And it's like, actually, no. I don't know that that's absolutely true. That's just what I've been told. And then if I sit with, how do I feel? Or what do I think? What happens to me inside when I think, oh, I have to work really hard to get it. Well, I get all tense that I'm not enough. I feel like I'm never going to be able to work that hard. I'm exhausted already to thinking about it. That I'm not positive. Fourth question about the work and what would you be? If you couldn't think that thought, how would you show up? What would happen inside of you? That thought wasn't even possible. Or like, you have to work hard. Oh my God, I'd be free. I'd, I'd be, I'd be, I'd have, I feel like life is easy. I'd go with the flow and my inner world would be at more peace. I so hard. So this is just one little tool. And so that's a tool that I personally use. Super effective, really easy to use. So anyone, this listening, look, Byron Katie, you're struggling with you know, that mental self chatter that's bringing you to a downward spiral. Um, because that, the work is simple, it's easy, it's practical, and it's effective, and you get results instantly when you start to tell yourself the truth. Like you said, you learn to, you learn to turn off the sabotager when you realize the sabotager is just lying to you. Uh, it, it, you make such a good point. I, I love how I love how you explain everything. You, um, you know, it's, it's so true. And uh, you know that I think if if people could get a hold of that, um, that would be such a turnaround for their life. Because I know for myself, you know, be, growing up like you, I suffered from an eating disorder. I was anorexic, and um, I was always worried about you know, what people thought of me and, and, um, you know, I was a people pleaser. I was a, I was a people pleaser and oh my gosh, that just created so much havoc in my life. Um, and yeah. you know, you, you can't please everyone. You, you, there's no way you, you, you'll die trying, you know? Um, and, yeah. And, and then, and that's, you know, I, I, uh, admire you that, you know, you, you did all these steps and, and like, you, you know, I would completely agree with you. I know I started meditating years ago and I think, you know, so many people don't realize the benefits of meditating, meditating just, I mean, I was just explaining to somebody just yesterday that they should start meditating because they're going through a very stressful time in their life. And, um, you know, they, like you said, they beat themselves up with their thoughts and, you know, do you have, um, specific meditations that you do that you can, um, recommend? Um, actually, yes, I've got lots of them. I love, um, like just, Vipassana. If someone wants to get into just this is the thing is that people don't meditate meditate because they think they're bad at it or they can't do it or it's too out there. And I want people to know that that everybody feels everybody feels the moment you close your eyes, the moment you to get filled, the mind just goes crazy. Like I can't do this. Stop when you think you're bad at it. But that's the whole point. We're all bad at it. No one starts out as a different nothing that little interesting thing practice. What I recommend for people where I started, I didn't know. I would just sit down in the morning and sit for a moment and I would just relax my body as deeply as I could get possibly can, but all movement except for your breath and just notice the movement and then just give yourself a minute just, just to witness what's there with no judgment. And if you want to, like some people like guided meditation, go to YouTube. You can find tons of guided meditation, um, inspirational meditation. I, I think it's whatever resonates with you. If you want guided meditation, offer guided meditation. Go to theworldgroovemovement.com and find out. I, I post about once every three months. It's completely free. And so they can get access to those. Um, and I do it really real. I'm a real, like, raw, real kind of or airy fairy, I'm pretty straight up and directed. So people that like that approach approach to meditation and the straightforward approach to you know their own consciousness and they'll resonate with what, what I do. That's kind of I think the first act is 
I'll set the timer for one minute. One minute, start with one breath. Give yourself an awareness of just one breath to just be present with yourself and to just breathe and to just witness what's there. What I love is that wrote the power and the Eckhart Tolle. Oh, yeah. I love what he said. Eckhart Tolle is amazing. He said something to me that in my meditation really like connects me my my um the energy that animates me very very quickly is I sit and I just feel the aliveness of just to see if I can sense the aliveness in my head. And that because it, your mind your mind can only think one thought at a time. Give it something to chew on, give it something to focus on. It's not gonna think about the bills and the body and the of this and the work and the conversation and all that. You can only think one time at a time. You are the master of your enemy. But it starts by one moment at a time. Learning to focus it. Learning to direct it. You get to choose what you want to focus on. You're the master of your mind. Your mind, don't let your mind master it. All other ancient cultures knew that our mind was a tool. Most of us are Culture, we let our mind tool us. Actually, can you use the tool and go, wait a minute, no, I can use Perfect example to let you know just how powerful that your body doesn't know the difference. When you think a thought, your body does not know the difference. Your mind is so powerful and you can make There's a, a psychologist out of if anyone out there in the audience wants to look up, she's an amazing psychologist that helped lots of people a little activity came from which is if you're at home right now just sit there close your eyes a couple breaths really relax and I want you to envision and a bright yellow lemon just imagine use your mind's eyes with your mouth bright yellow lemon in your hand fresh juice and I want you to imagine that you just bite of that lemon. I want you to chew it up in your mouth. Put up, let all the, the so all of it, like, so that. See what happens after. How you respond. If most people will probably feel like, oh my god, I just started salivating, and like every system of your body goes in. All you did was think about it. It's not even real. The thought. So if you're at home, you know, open your Start to understand the power of your mind, it will change everything. It will change everything. You can direct it. You can focus it. You can choose what you want to think. And once you do that, you can master your life. You can create anything you want. But the, the first step really is getting really clear with what you're thinking. What do you want? Like I now choose what I think. I choose I used to just be the witness, and I can witness it, but now what I like to do is that I like to be, I'm going to choose. I'm going to be the, the director of my life. I'm not going to just be at the whim. I get to direct what I want to do and how I want to live and how I want to feel, what I want to think. And we all have this power. I'm not any, I'm not different than anyone. Just when you understand, you get really real with yourself that you are not a victim. And that you have a good mind in that head. You were given a brain that works, that functions, and its job is to process information. But unfortunately, we believe the weird lies that it tells. Its job is just to process information. So, um, if I can get people to to that point, and that's why I have to be on creativity and their intuition and their authenticity. But I've also realized it's not just with that. There's all these other elements, and that's why I've created meditations and workshops and retreats and other things to help people get to that place and practice these skills so that they can, in their own unique way, not my way. And this is the thing. It's never about following my way, ever. Anyone to do that. What I like to do is help people find their own authentic path to their own vibrant health and their own happiness. and Write that script for themselves. It's got to start somewhere.
Yeah, it's so wonderful. You touched on so many important things. And oh my God, I just love the way that you explained all that. I couldn't have done a better job. Oh my God. You know, because it's the same thing, the same thing that I practice. And I try to explain it to people, but oh my God, you just, you did it so eloquently. Wow. Um, you know, uh, Thank you. I, you know, I just love that because, you know what, you know, just like you said, it's, you know, you're the director, you're the creator, you get to choose what you're going to think. Um, you know, every day I wake up and I say, I'm going to have an awesome day. And guess what happens? I have an awesome day. I, you know, I say everything's going to go well. I'm always on time. You know, I always create what I want my day to be like. And it, it actually, that's what happens. And, yep. you know... And, and you get to witness my product. Yeah, yeah, you, you do. And, I, you know, it's it's like so incredible how those little things, you know, completely make a big difference in your life. And, you know, I love how you tie everything into, you know, your your, your dance and the movement and being free and just being authentic. And, and that is just so refreshing. Everyone needs to learn how to be authentic. And, you know, I love that, you, that message, you know, have. it's amazing. How come I didn't hear about this when I was younger? <laughs> you know? Well, it's exactly, I'm like, God, why did we all, that's what I mean, we're Simple, easy, classical things that we that, that help us to be creative, authentic, wildly free, express beings that we're supposed to be. We're born free. Like this is the way we're supposed to be, and we can cage ourselves, and, and we don't even realize that the cage isn't locked. It's not locked. We even heard, like for me that that gift of authenticity is like not that everybody needs to. My thing is, I just I wish that upon every. The delicious nectar of allowing themselves to be authentically themselves, fearlessly, knowing that when they do that, they will live their greatest life. They will achieve their greatest abundance. They will have their greatest joy. So it's the, um, you know, what's his name that said it, you know, follow your bliss. Oh, Wayne Dyer? Yes, and it's so true. Mm -hmm. The things that make you happy is like the yellow brick road, road to, to heaven. Follow the little breadcrumbs of joy and the things that make you light up. And don't even worry about the stuff that doesn't all go. I'm afraid of hurting people's feelings or, you know, we're trying to please everyone. But if people, there's people in your life that bring you down, stop, just release that. Just like, why waste your time? Your life is so precious. You do not know how much time you actually have. Really don't. And who are you spending it with? How are you spending it? How do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? It's really up to you. And I, I will say this over and over, you're not a victim. And every single person at some point in time needs to take full responsibility for their life, for their work, for their happiness, for their relationships, for their pain, for their anything. We are not victims. And we need to stand and take responsibility and realize that we can think what we want, create what we want. All those days, I'm like you, when I get up in the morning, I love to... It's not even affirmations because I felt like I was always trying to convince myself of something. But what I like to say is stuff like, it feels so good to be surrounded by amazing people that support me. It feels so good. And I get to sit with how good that actually feels. You know, and I generate the feelings. And so people at home, if you want to create any life you want, you have to match the feeling, with the emotion and the thought and the imagination. You've got to visualize it, but you have to feel it. That is the language of the universe. The frequency of, of emotion, and it is so powerful, but you have to generate how good it feels. And spend time every day sitting with the feel-good feelings of how you want to feel in your life. Sometimes I'll just sit and be like, oh, my God, it feels so good to feel good. And the more I do that, the more I feel good. And then the more I feel good, and the more I feel good. I did not realize I could feel this good. Five years ago, I was depressed and sad and disappointed with life and you know, broke up, his boyfriend cheated on me, and it was just all this stuff, and I'm just like feeling sorry for myself, and wah, wah, life sucks, and why me, and poor me. Then I just woke up, and I was like, wait a minute. How long am I going to tell this story? How long am I going to tell this story and waste my time when I'm here to have a good time? Like, look up. Look up. Look at the trees. Look at what's around you. Look at this amazing planet that we're on that literally is heaven, because you couldn't think of a place 
more majestic than the planet Earth. Yes. Like, think of anywhere you'd want to live. Mars, Saturn, Venus. Is there anywhere? No. No. Planet Earth is heaven right now, and we create heaven in the moment by what we think. Period. It's heaven or hell by what you think. And it's literally created in the moment, and we live in heaven, and it's, you can choose to tap into it and realize that well-being is the nature of reality. You look out, and you look how nature just renews itself and just replenishes itself and just gives and gives and gives and renews and gives, and it's endless and it's effortless. We're part of that, but yet we feel like we have to toil and struggle and strain. And No, 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 no. Nature doesn't toil, struggle, and strain. It just does what it needs to do. And it renews itself, and it gives. I love it when I walk and I see a, a plant breaking through cement on the sidewalk. But it will literally break through the cement, just like it's that powerful. It's gonna, it's gonna find a way. And it just blows my mind, and that we need and we can tap into the well-being of the world, and not buy into that everything's falling apart and it's all terrible. If we've been saying that stuff for you ever. I know. Stop right? saying it. It's like <laughs> nothing. It's never been better. It's never been better. And that's my attitude. It's never been better. It's never been better. And it just keeps getting better. And, you know, people can buy into this stuff that's happening and politically and whatever. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you sit in the actual moment right now, this very moment, if you all sit with right now, you're okay. Right now, the reality is you don't think the thoughts and you just sit with the presence of your own breath. It's delicious. Life is delicious. And it happens in the moment, not in your thoughts and worries and fears about the past or the future. It's now. And we, it's just tuning into the now with your breath and going, hey, well, actually, my worst fear is just a fear. I'm okay. I'm just here right now and all is good. Like, it's my fear that cripples me. And yeah. the fear isn't even real. Yeah. That, that's so. true. I, I love that. I, I have this um, thing that, you know, I read years and years ago is that fear stands for false evidence appearing real. It's not even real. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It's not even real. Uh. Nope. Nope. And as bad as you think things are going to be, it, nothing's ever been what you thought it was going to be, ever. Okay. You know, it's like, you know, we just build these stories in our mind and it's like, that's the dream. That's the illusion. We're stuck in this dream. And the dream of these images and thoughts in our minds that aren't even real. When you tap into the present moment of now, you just open your eyes and you wake up and you breathe. You're like, wow, I'm okay. All is good. Wow. All of that other stuff is just images in my mind. I'm in a dream. I'm literally sleepwalking. Holy cow. Like, this is a dream. I'm walking in a dream. But it's all in your mind. And then you wake up to that and you realize, wow, I can... I can actually dream any dream I want. And I don't have to I don't have to believe those images that come through my mind of, you know, life is hard or that, you know, whatever it might be. And you know, just all the stories we know, like each person from your childhood, you were told something and you you know, we live our lives by these what we're born into, you know, and it's a little different for everybody. We have common denominators because, you know, if we live in the same country or well, we all live in a political environment. We all live in that. But it's like, you know what? Everything's fine. We're all fine. Oh, I agree. Don't take action, but every, we're all fine. If you breathe into this moment right here, right now, you're okay. Absolutely true. Now, for people who want to get a hold of you, Misty, what's the best way to get a hold of you? And <clears throat> excuse me, if they're interested in, in your events and, your, and what you have to offer, what is the best way for them to get a hold of you? The best way is to actually go to the worldgroovemovement.com. Um, because there you can, you can connect through me, Misty Tripoli. You'll find my, my web pages through there if you want to find more about me and my story. But the World Groove Movement is the movement. It's what we're creating across the world. You can also sign up for the newsletter and get all the information about what we're doing in the world and the meditations that are free. But if you want to get your groove on at home, and you want to just start dancing, and you're like, I'm afraid to do this on my own. I still feel really stupid. I have an at-home um, dance product. It's called Body Group. And you can go to bodygroup.com, and you can get your groove on at home by yourself and just at least start the process of at least starting to flex that muscle of feeling good in your body and treating your body nicely and um, being creative and authentic and um, with, your, with yourself. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. But um, if you start with the World Groove Movement, you'll end up finding all my stuff. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you on. And oh my gosh, you know, I just love your message. And um, I'm going to check out your website. And so I'm going to post all the links to Misty's um, information on the show. Um, so you'll have all the links. And, you know, for those of you who are listening and you want to get a hold of her, like she said, go to the website and you will be able to find all her uh, information. And thank you so much, Misty. And I'm just so excited that you were on the show. And I love the message. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited to, fi- you know, do what you, I'm going to start moving more off of this than I do now. <laughs> Janet, thank you so much for having me. It's been a great conversation. I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with your audience. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. And uh, have fun in Cancun. I know it's beautiful there, so enjoy the, the weather and the scenery. Oh, I will. Thank you, and you take care. Thank you, you too. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Well, everyone, that was Misty. And oh my gosh, what a wealth of knowledge she has. And the way that she puts things was so eloquent and you know it's so true that what she said and you know i hope that you have learned some things from this conversation and that you'll you know you take to heart what she said so please check her out and join us next monday night 9 p.m for embrace your power good night everyone